Okay, so here we have it. This is uh, the next major project on the bench or on the bike lift in this case. And that's a Norton Commando. I think it's uh, 73, is it? <coughs> it's a, a Mark II uh, 850. It's either a Mark II or a Mark II A, I'm not quite sure. I think the Mark IIs were, uh, Mark IIs were America, I think, and Mark II As were Europe. No, it might be might be the other way around. Anyway, we're going to be rebuilding this um, this engine uh, completely, engine and gearbox. Uh, so we'll be stripping it down, probably um, putting new valve guides in, probably rebore, possibly. Uh, I say possibly because obviously it depends what we find. Same with the valve guides; it could just need honing, but I'd imagine it probably needs a rebore and um, new pistons, um, and then we'll be down to the crankshaft, clean the crankshaft out, having it probably ground down, new shells, new uh, big ends, new main bearings. Uh, stripping the gearbox and checking that's working all okay. And obviously doing all the primary chain case and probably upgrading the clutch, um, see what the primary chain's like and so on. Basically, we strip it down, take it completely apart, work out what needs replacing, what doesn't, and then, then rebuild it. Now, the thing about this particular one is commandos, uh, they're built with the infamous isoelastic uh, uh, system, whereby the engine is kind of like rubber mounted, uh, separate to the frame. I, I think the, the name, I might be wrong, but I think the name isoelastic is uh, a portmanteau word from isolate and elastic. So it's like elastic isolation. Uh, I think that's that's where it comes from. But they, they created this name, Isolastics, because it sounds an awful lot better than rubber mounted, uh, which is effectively what it is. Because um, the problem with uh, British uh, twins is that they can't really go much above 650cc without massive vibration problems. Um, uh, but, you know, with the advent of the 70s and the Japanese bikes, uh, as we well know, they they were far superior engineering wise and a lot faster. So the Brits had to do something, and of course, the state of the British industry at the time they they, they couldn't simply create a new engine. Uh, not not really. Um, so they they just beefed up existing engines uh, to try and make them a bit faster, but that meant massive vibration. And uh, the only way of really combating vibration was um, to to rubber mount them. Uh, in the case of the uh, in the case of the Trident, they got round that. That was um, that's a three cylinder. Um, but the trouble with the twins is, you know, seven fifty and above, they were they were struggling with vibration. So even on the tridents, they had things like later on, they had rubber mounted footrests to try and stop the buzzing coming through the footrests and buzzing and rubber mounted handlebars as well, because we got that buzzing through the handlebars as well. Um, so we have the ice elastic system in the uh, commando, <coughs> rubber mounted. And what they did was they had like a separate engine cradle inside the frame. And on the engine cradle was also the... Um, rear swinging arm and also the centre stand as I found out to my cost <laughs> once when I took everything apart because I just sort of without thinking about it I thought the centre stand would be on the frame but of course it's not and when I loosened the engine the whole everything <laughs> like fell off the whole bike nearly fell off the stand because of course the, the centre stand wasn't on the frame it was on the on the engine mountings so the whole thing is like one unit now this uh uh, and so it can come out as one unit, as we can see here. This is it's been taken apart and taken out of the bike in one unit. Now the main reason I think for that is they've had big trouble because this this here is a stud or a bolt that goes through the middle of the ice elastic. This is this where this on the outside is rubber, okay, and that that is the ice elastic. That's the main rear ice elastic mounting unit, and that is a a stud that goes all the way through that you tighten up at either end. And what's happened is this stud has obviously uh, rusted solid inside the ice elastic. And so they couldn't get the, they couldn't get the stud out. 
Um, so what they've done is they've had to saw off the stud at either end, which must have been a heck of a job, because I think that must be inside the frame. Uh, you know, because obviously it was outside the frame, it still won't come out. Anyway, um, we'll, we'll we'll come on to that uh, later, but that's that is um, rusted solid. So what we'll try and do is we'll just push out the whole high elastic unit because we'll probably be replacing it anyway, um, uh, and that needs replacing. Okay, uh, but that's why that's why it's all I'm still in the frame in the engine frame. Um, because that's what you can do with the commandos. You can just take the whole unit out in one go. Or you can, which is what I did last time, you can slowly dismantle them in the frame bit by bit. But this one's been taken out in one lump, so that's what we've got. Um, okay, you can see, obviously, <laughs> we've had a bit of a problem getting this uh, exhaust uh, downpipe off. So in the end, they just cut it off which is actually quite good for me because it's good. You know, to, it gives you something good to hold on to and lift the engine when you're moving it around. Uh, okay, but that's that's basically our next job. We're going to be stripping it down, stripping the whole thing down. Looks like it's on points. Uh, and uh, judging by the uh, wiring, I'm fairly sure it would be still be on points. So whether we might be converting it to... Uh, Electro electronic ignition as well, I don't know. But we'll be stripping the whole thing down and then deciding exactly what engineering work needs to do, what needs repairing, replacing, and so on, and what doesn't. I don't think we're going to be blasting this, giving it some aqua blasting to bring the cases up to nice and shiny. We might do. We might just do the head, maybe. Uh, not sure. It's. Um, uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll probably be polishing the outer cases uh gearbox case, timing case, and uh, primary chain case. Right, uh, we haven't got the carburetors, so that's sort of quite nice in some ways. I don't have to worry about doing them. Uh, but I'm interested to see what is uh, what is and what isn't inside there and what the state it's in. Uh, it's obviously been sitting for an awful long time because I one thing is I'm surprised it didn't take the um, swinging arm off. And then I look, you probably can't see it, but it's like full of uh, moss and things uh, in there. <laughs> because we'll come on to, we'll do everything step by step, but basically you remove this, this nut here and then screw a bolt in and you should be able to slide the swinging arm shaft out. But um, I imagine that's, uh, that's going to be interesting because the thread is just full of moss and debris so, and rusted. We'll see. Uh, what else have we got? We've got the other essentials here. Um, I've got the, the, the Norton Workshop Manual for the for the correct year. Uh, we've got the uh, correct parts list. These two are essential, really, because you know you can't ring up and order parts saying, "Oh, I want you know, I don't know, I want a valve or something," and you know, well, well, which bike, and also. There are so many parts that changed over the years. You know, as production went on, they found, you know, there were upgrades, continual upgrades and so on. So, you know, you need your parts manual, uh, your parts catalogue rather. And so you can say, look, you ring up and say, right, this is the part number. Because otherwise, you'll just, they'll, they'll just end up sending you, uh, um, you know, you'll end up ordering parts that are just wrong, basically. Uh, and it's just, you know, it's a very depressing. Whereas if you got if you got one of these, you right, this part, look it up, right, that's the one I want, part number. Then I've got the original, uh, I've got the the Haynes workshop manual, which which uh, can be useful. Um, and just by the by, total uh, amazing coincidence, my neighbour, my neighbour's cousin, I think it is. This is this is actually his bike. Uh, you know, I met him. I met him. He, uh, a year or so ago he came around and said yeah this is my bike that Haynes I think you know took it off him or bought him off or something and they rebuilt it and then gave it him back and that's actually his bike <laughs> so that's that's amazing uh, that's an amazing coincidence and then of course uh, the, the most wonderful manual written by uh, oh written by me okay there's the enthusiast restoration manual okay so I will be using this full of lovely colour pictures and so on uh, and I will actually be using this, even though it's my own manual, because, of course, it's a few years since I actually rebuilt 
the uh, commando engine. So I will actually be thinking, uh, you know, referring to this as to what I should do next and so on. Okay. Um, uh, oh, and I've also got the Peter Henshaw Norton Commando Bible. That, that, that's just interesting for engine numbers and general background information, which is always useful knowing uh, when, you're, when you're doing these engines. But these two essential recommended. Obviously, this is essential. <laughs> but uh, that could just be me saying that. But uh, but I think it, you know, I, I say it's saying so. I think it's pretty good. Okay. Um, there we go. So I haven't, I literally haven't even touched it yet. So I'll be, uh, you know, we'll be uh, doing it step by step. Everything will be on the videos. And we'll be covering every single thing. Nothing's going to be missed out. And uh, we'll see how we get on. Uh, the last thing I'll say is bear in mind, I, uh, you know, I'm not saying that when I do this, this is the way to do it. I'm not a commando expert. I'm just more of a general mechanic. You know, I've got my mattress Model X. I've got my Trident. And I've got my, uh, my 850. And I did have my Kawasaki Z1, which I've now sold. Got another Trident there. So I'm a general mechanic. But uh, I'll tell you, I'll go through with it how I'm going to do it. And I'll also tell you any mistakes that I make, obviously. But bear in mind that just because I'm doing it this way doesn't mean that's the best way of doing it or the right way of doing it. It's the way I do it. And if it works, I'll tell you it works. And if it doesn't work, I'll tell you it doesn't work. Okay, there we go. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about getting stuck into this engine and starting taking it apart and seeing what it's like inside.